Hello and welcome to the Talk BGKY podcast, the official podcast for the city of Bowling Green. My name is Cameron Levis. Um, I'm the Recreation Division Manager with Bowling Green Parks and Recreation. Um, we're excited to, to have our first episode related to Parks and Rec and all the fun that we have with our department here with the city of Bowling Green. I'm excited to have some guests with me. Um, we're going to talk community centers. We're going to talk recreation. We're going to talk summer camps um, as we gear up for the summer season, uh, which is our time to shine uh, in parks and recreation. So I'm going to let our guests introduce ourselves, starting person to my right. I'm Maddie Duncan. Um, I am the Adaptive Recreation Supervisor. Awesome. Uh, my name is Braxton Sow. I'm the Community Center Coordinator for the FO Moxie Center. And I am Jakia Patterson, and I am one of the coordinators for Park Event and Community Center. Very cool. All right. So, you know, sitting here uh, during this podcast, uh, helping me with this episode, we've got some of our youngest professionals in our department, pretty, pretty new to their positions over the last few years. Um, so I really just want to start out and kind of ask you guys, you know, what, um, what brought you to the field of parks and recreation? You know, there's probably not many people that realize that, you know, working in, in parks, working in recreation and, and bringing fun to our community can be a career that they pursue. So what, what is it that kind of drew you or brought you to the field of parks and recreation? Well, it was my first job uh, growing up in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, that was my first job at the age of 15 working at a community center. Um, so in Metro Nashville Public Parks, um, my start was at Shelby Park Community Center as a summer camp counselor. So just getting that experience up until I graduated and uh, came to college uh, really, you know, gave me the good foundation. And it was just, you know, fun. You know, at the time it was just a normal job, you know, something to do. But um, coming to Bowling Green and then getting my start as a part-timer at the FO Moxie Center, uh, I realized that it was something bigger and it was something that I could be doing, you know, as a professional. That's awesome. I love that. So you started out in the community center, you're staying in the community center and go. impacting youth. There That's awesome. Is. What about you, Jakia? Um, so for me, I was just looking for a job. I didn't have no money at the time. So I was just looking for a job, but I would volunteer at the center um, occasionally. And then once um, they had an opening, I applied. And then I got it. So I started working in 2017 and kind of just fell in love with um, what I was doing and the kids. And I seen the impact that I was making. So I just stayed. It doesn't really feel like a job. Um, it feels more like just what I love to do, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah. That's cool. I love it. What about you, Maddie? Um, so I was paralyzed when I was 13. And part of my therapy was recreational therapy. And so I had a really good rec therapist up in Louisville. And she kind of inspired me to kind of go into the field of rec therapy and doing different uh, recreation programming for people with disabilities. Awesome. And now you get to run a program do. doing just that every single day. That's pretty awesome. I love it. Um, so what, what would you say, I'm going to ask each of you guys this, and I want you to kind of, kind of, frame your thoughts um, to, to give me an answer to this question. So what do you think parks and recreation means to our community? I don't kind of put you on the spot because that's a, that's a big overarching question. Do you want just words that yeah. we think of? Uh, however you want to I answer. think for me, from my perspective, safe space, fun, active, that's what I see. Impact. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I like it. Braxton, what about you? For parks and recreation to our community? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely like a good uh, ways of leisure. Uh, I believe that our community, um, when we give them something different, you know, um, uh, they get to, they definitely show up, but I feel like, you know, we just get to make a smile on their faces and mm -hmm. that makes, you know, that means the world, you know, just so that they can come and have a good time and if you can make somebody smile, you know, through parks and recreation, that we've done our jobs. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. So. Absolutely. I like that. What about you, Maddie? A little I, bit of a different perspective with the adaptive program. Yeah, I think through the adaptive program, it really provides inclusiveness, mm -hmm. both with, you know, having disabled people and non-disabled people come together, but also just letting people with disabilities have a community around them sure. and being able to kind of have people that they relate to. Mm. No doubt. Yeah, when we when we talk about 
having myself started most of my career like in the adaptive recreation program when we think about people with and without disabilities you know coming together in our community there really is no better way than recreation and sport to bring people together of a multitude of differences right Mm -hmm. it can be from one neighborhood on this side of the city to the other neighborhood on this side of the city when we Mm -hmm. bring people together to play you know it's kind of that universal language of a smile you know when you see somebody else enjoying something then you realize hey you know we can do this together so we really do get to you know kind of do that every day in our jobs which is pretty awesome that's cool i love that nice answers guys all right so i'm gonna what i want to do is kind of shift gears and and chat a little bit because um you know you guys all work in different different divisions Mm -hmm. um or at least different locations so i kind of want you to spend a little bit uh individually telling me either like about your community center uh, obviously because you know braxton you're somewhere different than jakia and then maddie of course you know with the adaptive program it's different than just a community center and so just want to spend a little bit Telling me about your community center, you know, your location or your division, you know, with parks and recreation and some of the things that you guys do year round and then kind of that target population that you're looking to serve each day, if that makes sense. Um, So whoever wants to start, maybe Maddie, you want to start a little bit? And I can piggyback with you too. So our overarching goal is to provide recreation to people with disabilities. And so we do that in a couple different ways year round. And we offer a wide variety of Special Olympic sports. So right now we're in the middle of our track and field season. We just had our regional tournament. And next we'll start softball. We offer bowling, flag football, basketball, really any sport you think of, we probably can offer it. And then- Not a lot of downtime. No, no. no. And so we offer both, they get to participate in a regional tournament, and then if they're lucky enough, they can make it to the state tournament, and that's usually held out of Bowling Green. So we, that's a weekend trip to Louisville, a weekend trip to EKU, and so those are really fun. And that's for people with more intellectual disabilities, and then we offer different programming for people with physical disabilities as well. So we offer wheelchair basketball, goal ball for those that are visually impaired, and wheelchair tennis, usually twice a year. And we offer all of those just year round, except for in the summer when we shut down for summer camp. And then we've started offering more day programming as well. So I run a book club that meets twice a month. We run a fun and games program that we kind of rotate in and out of sports. So we've done pickleball, we do basketball, we do um, no kickball, wiffle ball, all of all of the different kind of sports that you can play and then leave and. We can change it out the next week. Um, We do different arts and crafts programs. And so that's, we we typically base it on the season. So we'll do a a seasonal craft once a month. And then we also have tried to start a walking club. So just a way for people to come out and get active on Friday afternoons. Awesome. I love that. Um, Yeah, so it's it's both passive, it's active recreation. lots of opportunities and of course we'll talk on summer here in a little bit uh what you guys do in the summer um another thing obviously to touch on too is is some of the partnerships with county parks Mm -hmm. uh with our adaptive water sports program so you know giving people with physical disabilities an opportunity to be in the outdoors um so you don't get much rest uh yeah yeah but i love it it, yeah it's awesome um no it it truly is um a really cool thing and and that's a that that's a historic historic program uh in a lot of ways you know that program has um we've talked about it a lot you know within the city but the adaptive recreation division used to be the special populations program um you know which started as the bowling green adult athletic club in the early 80s and so that program has been making an impact you know here in bowling green and warren county for decades um at this point and really what that division is is a strategic decision on the part of the city to say hey we're going to dedicate staff we're going to dedicate money we're going to dedicate time um to making sure that this population of people people with intellectual and physical disabilities have the opportunity to enjoy the same things that our entire community does when it comes to recreation and sport on a daily basis um and that that really does you know set our community apart there's not many people um other communities in the state of kentucky that offer those um and you know, here in Bowling Green, Lexington, Louisville, those are really kind of the three places that make that dedicated decision on a on a daily basis. Um, and so, you know, Maddie gets to continue um, kind of carrying that torch with her and Hannah and all the staff down there. And 
it's going to be a program that, you know, is a, is a, you know, strong, um, you know, priority for us as a department for another 50 years. Right. And so really neat that we, we get to serve that population and dedicate time to making those things happen. So thank you for sharing a little bit about that. Braxton, do you want to tell us about uh, Moxley Community Center? Sure. So the FO Moxley Center, um, we do a very a variety of programs. Uh, right now we're in after school, of course, so that's like our um, program that we do, you know, all school year. Uh, we host about 55 kids. Um, so you're really focusing on youth. Youth. Uh -huh. So our program is centered around youth ages 5 to 13. Um, so that's like how we do our camps, our after school programs. Uh, we just wrapped up our spring break camp, which was real fun. Uh, we also do this program called Bitty Ball. So we try to offer a program uh, to youth ages f three to five and pretty much give them the basic foundation of what they need to know to go to the next level and play in the youth uh, basketball league. So we usually see about 100 kids uh, during that time. So it's like a real busy time of the year. We do it twice a year. So we do it in the fall and the winter league. Uh, so it's a real fun program. We've also started like a cheerleading program for those same kids, uh, three to five. So it's real fun to see those little ones come out there and have a good time with us. Um, our summer camps, we uh, see about 150 kids and uh, do a variety of activities. Uh, we try to take them to our different parks that we have in the city. Uh, we'll take them on a whole bunch of field trips. Um, and just have some in-house fun with them, uh, with our camp counselors and our staff. Sure, so. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, Moxley Community Center is is located um, kind of on our main campus yes. uh, for BGPR. So, right in downtown Bowling Green, really over by Roland Bland Park and the mm -hmm. skate park and Coomer Little Recreation Center. So then, shifting gears to Jakia, um, who's at our Parker Bennett Community Center. So. Some of the same programming, some of the same target population, but describe to me a little bit uh, about what makes Parker Bennett unique. So Parker Bennett is located in the housing authority um, area, well, one of the housing authority areas. Um, so we have a lot of families who are low income, um, hence to why our after school program is free. Um, and then we also have similar camps to F.O. Moxley. So we have the summer, the spring, the fall break camp. Um, we do have different programs that take place. Our haunted house happens every every year. Um, we do have a pageant that takes place for the girls every spring semester. So we're currently in that now. Um, what else do we do? We also do community events between all of the centers. So we do the Sweethearts Challenge, we do the Bunny Hop Trail, um, we do the, um, we also do another haunted house at Soki, uh, and that's like mid October. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we have going on. Our after school program, um, we have 90 kids enrolled, and then for our summer camp program, we only take 80 kids due to our center being so small. But we make it work. We make it work. That's right. I like mm -hmm. it. And, and you mentioned the special events, um, which is a really cool thing for us to touch on. You know, that the, the focus on special events for us was really a product of, of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, of the pandemic, because all of us, you know, our normal programs and the things that we were doing on a daily basis had to stop. Mm -hmm. um, and after about four months of disinfecting every park bench mm -hmm. uh, in the city of Bowling Green and every light pole and caution tape and all the playgrounds, I think some of us were just like, all right, enough's enough. Yeah. Uh, we got to figure out a way to still reach our community in a safe way um, during the pandemic. And so August hit and, and we're like, hey, how can we creatively um, still bring fun to our community? And it's been kind of neat because the pumpkin trail and, and the sweet arts challenge and all these things that started um, as a COVID safe way of doing recreation have evolved into annual events for us mm -hmm. um you know the bunny hop trail and all these things and we have uh created a what seems like a cult following of people in our community that are like hey if bowling green parks and rec is is doing this event we're going to show up um and and now we know we have a, a responsibility to to show up mm -hmm. um as professionals and bring those opportunities to our community but it's it's it truly is a fun thing for us all to come together we do our things on a daily basis but then we all come together to reach our community in a, in a bigger way 
Um, and that, that is, that is a, a true depiction of what recreation is, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm glad you touched on that. Um, and so when we think about, um, you know, these community centers and, and, and what you're offering to youth, um, you know, it's not just serving the youth. You mentioned spring break camp. Yeah. Um, you think about summer camp, you think about after school, you know, you're also serving parents, right? You're, you're giving parents um, a safe place for their kids to be, um, you know, on those school breaks when parents are still working and, and they need some place for their kids to, to get not just safe, you know, childcare or, or opportunities for that, but also effective and fun places for their kids to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so expand on that a little bit. Um, you know, you're not just serving youth, but how do you guys see your role in, in helping parents feel comfortable, you know, with their kids being in your programs? That might have been a tough question. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I yeah. can say, like, our parents appreciate mm -hmm. sure. everything that we do for those kids at the center. That's right. um, I think it also brings new opportunities to their kids because when we do plan fall break and spring break and summer break um, camps, we try to take the kids somewhere that they've never been before. Sure. So I think the parents are also appreciative of that too. Um, so being able to, like you said, to have that safe space for them, I think it brings a sense of relief to the parents. Like, whoo, okay, I know my kids are at the center. I know they're safe. I know they're having a good time. Um, so it feels good that the parents trust us with their kids. No doubt. Um, so I love just seeing the kids come back because some of them start at age of five and then they age out you know at 13 so it's good to see that the parents trust us with their kids um and they keep coming back to, and, so. and i i'm glad you mentioned the unique experiences because we have a conversation a lot like when when we're planning and, and we're thinking about our programs it's what can we be providing here mm -hmm. that they're not going to get anywhere else mm -hmm. right you know what experiences can we give the kids can we give the participants in the adaptive sports program, if they were in any other community, mm -hmm. what are we going to provide that's unique? What mm -hmm. are we going to provide that they couldn't get anywhere else? And so, right. Jakia, if, if you can, like briefly, because you made me think of an example, a um, couple years ago, a couple things, a couple years ago, you guys took a trip to, you know, one of our national parks mm -hmm. that's very close. So touch on that some. And I know, Braxton, you went too. So I think, right? No, Moxley did not go. Mm -hmm just Parker Bennett. <laughs> so talk a little bit about that experience. Um, but then also, um, the program that you guys did last spring with the students at Western, uh, at WKU yeah. going out to the McChesney mm -hmm. field campus. So talk yeah. about those experiences. Um, okay. So when we took the kids to Mammoth Cave, that was also an experience for a lot of the staff too, cause we've never been. Sure. So being able to, to actually go to the cave and, no, we didn't go in, but we were just able to still go. Um, it was it was definitely an experience. Um, I think the kids really enjoyed. I'm not gonna say is it like a hike, like a walk. They enjoyed doing all of that. Um, it was a part where we were actually close to an entryway of the cave, mm -hmm. and it was hot outside. But we were standing like right beside, like I said, the entryway, and it was so cold. Mm -hmm. So the kids were definitely hype about that. Like, oh my gosh, why is it so cold? Why is it so, you know? So I think it just was a cool just, learning opportunity. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. So I think um, that was that was just a great opportunity for them to have. And then we ate lunch on site. So you know they got to eat lunch outside. Cool. Um, I think that was that was really um, neat. And then and last... your, in your center, you know, Parker Bennett is, is in the city. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of these kids, experiencing that remote nature mm -hmm. doesn't always happen. No, it doesn't. Right? So it that, doesn't. I'm sure that was a, a first for many. Yeah, it definitely was. And that's why I'm thankful for uh, Dr. Ramsey for coming in and, you know, wanting to allow these kids to do different things. Um, so last semester, last spring semester, um, we took the kids out to this uh, campus called, field campus called McChesney. And it was about, I'd say like 15, 20 minutes out. It's out there. Um, yeah, it is out there. <laughs> um, but we got to take them and we took them every Wednesday and they got to learn different things about nature, the environment. Mm. Um, and one day they actually got to, I don't, I didn't go, so I'm not sure like all of all the details, but I know they got to taste syrup from one of from one of the trees 
I think it was sap, syrup, something like that. But um, it was really cool just for them to come back and, you know, kind of share. They were so excited, like, oh, I got to I got to taste it. I got to do this. I got to do that. So that was that was really neat. Um, That's awesome. So I think it's just it's just an opportunity for them. And Dr. Ramsey also just started. Um, he just built a like a little planter box out in front of our center. Um, so the kids will get to grow vegetables. Awesome. this summer so i'm really excited about that um but yeah that's cool and i and i think that's just one example you know a, a, a true testament to not just you guys mm -hmm. for sure you all and, and your creativity and your willingness to come up with cool programs but that that's kind of the neat thing about being a parks and rec professional right mm -hmm. is overall we're in the business of enhancing quality of life bringing these unique experiences and that can look different every single day mm -hmm. and so there there really is no limit um, you know, as far as what we can do in the lives of the populations that we serve, um, we get to creatively, you know, with, with, with full on imagination, kind of like a child ourselves, mm -hmm. think about ways for them to enjoy each day that they're with us. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's kind of the beauty of what we do, uh, in parks and recreation and, and, you know, the true impact that we can make. And so that's a testament to you guys. Cause I, you know, know that you all are always creatively trying to think of ways to reach the people that you work with on a daily basis and mm -hmm. um, it truly does make us have a great team so let's let's talk summer real quick as we kind of get towards towards the end of this um, Braxton kind of touched on you know their summer camp a little bit but I want each of you guys individually to you know give me the name of the summer camp program that you offer because all three of you do three different summer camps um, three different groups of kids and adults which you know spoiler alert Maddie will touch on that um, but talk about the summer camps. What does summer look like um, for the groups that you serve on a daily basis? What does a, a day at your camp look like, even though every day is, is no different? Um, and we'll talk a little bit, too, about how, how we facilitate those camps as far as, you know, the amount of people that we hire and, and everything to make those things possible. So, Maddie, why don't you tell us about the, the summer camp programs with the Adaptive Rec Division? In the Adaptive Recreation Division, we have technically two different camps that we offer. Um, we offer Camp Happy Days, which is for uh, youth with disabilities ages six to 18. And then we offer New Adventure Adult Camp, which is for all adults 18 plus. And so it's kind of two different day types when we do them. Camp Happy Days runs three weeks, one session in June, one session in July, um, with two weeks in between and that we you know, the kids come in, they eat breakfast. We do typically a, a morning game section. And then typically all of our field trips are in the morning, whether that's us going to the planetarium, us going swimming, um, walking down to Circus Square to play in the fountains, walking down to the Capitol to watch a movie. Um, that typically all happens in the morning. We come back for lunch and then the rest of the day is a little bit of free time, a little bit of you know, structured play, crafts. Uh, we implemented a quiet time last year after lunch, which is, you know, that's 30 minutes that we can sit, read a book, we can lay down, we can go watch a movie quietly. Um, we can play games, board games, just any, any different type of kind of quiet activity to make sure that, you know, lunch digests, we don't have any throw up incidents and that, you know, we kind of take a little bit of the day to not be so you know, hyped up all the time. Mm -hmm. And then with our adult camp, that is a full day field trip. So they will get to the Coomer Little Center at 8 a.m. We will load buses and we will go really anywhere. So last year we went out to the Western Dairy Farm and we tested all of the cheese that they had made. Mm -hmm. And we went to Top Crops and then we typically go out somewhere to eat lunch or we come back to Coomer Little and cook our own lunch. So We'll cook spaghetti and meatballs. We'll cook, um, you know, we'll do salads. We'll do sandwiches. We'll, we really try to focus on skill building with our adult camp mm -hmm. and being able to, you know, put in these adults that they can then go out into the community and apply these skills to what they do. So ordering at restaurants or being able to go and work at Top Crops and then they can go out there every Friday or being able to go through a museum respectfully, quietly, and being able to really take in what is happening around them. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so those two camps really, you know, really kind of serve two purposes. And with the adults, it's, um, 
you know, an, a really neat purpose of, of giving those adults with disabilities the opportunity to be out in the community and learn some of those daily living skills um, that can transition throughout the entire year and, and things like that. So it's, it's awesome that we can serve, you know, both those populations in two unique ways. Um, so Braxton, tell me a little bit about Summer Fun Camp. So Summer Fun Camp is a camp that uh, we serve about typically about 150 kids. So it's a full house when we're in the FL Bakhti Center. Uh, very quiet right no not at all <laughs> not at all but you know with the facility we have we're able to spread out uh we usually host about five to six groups uh different ages like five through six maybe some six and seven and seven and eight nine ten eleven to thirteen um so they're like doing all kind of activities so it's a lot going on at fo Moxley. so one group could be i don't know at the water park another group could playground it's hard to be you know a lot of places at one time uh, with our camp uh, but we have a good time at the FM Moxie Centers and we give them a uh, lunch snack uh, we bring our lunch in-house so that way you know we can all be in-house uh, eating lunch together so that works out um, we take them on different uh, kind of field trips we will go to the water park uh, we go downtown the Capitol Arts we watch a good movie we may even take them to the Regal movie theater on the days where it's like a dollar, so it's very budget friendly for us. Um, we'll also go. Uh, We're being very good stewards of the taxpayer yeah, dollars. Yeah, you have to. You know, you have to manage that money very well. That's so, right. Uh, where else? We may take them uh, different parks. City of Bowling Green has so many beautiful parks that they don't even know about. So we try right, to make sure. sure that we go to at least all of them with uh, the time we have. As long as the weather permits, we'll be out there. Um, we love going to uh, X Claim. That's been our new thing lately. So we'll go and see stage plays mm. uh, uh, through X Claim, and uh, it's supporting other youth. So they're the ones uh, putting on the plays, and uh, we come to realize that some of our kids are the ones um, in the camp sometimes. So we like supporting our own group of people, um, and that's pretty cool. We enjoy going there. Uh, we always take them to Cheney's Dairy Barn, so getting to do that, those type of activities, the planetarium, going to the Western, so it's always busy at Summer Fun Camp. So it's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And Shakira, what about you? Camp Good Times. Camp Good Times. Never a bad time. Never. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's always a good time. <laughs> at Camp Good Times. Camp Good Times, we host 80 kids during the summer. We take a lot of field trips, like I was talking earlier about opportunity, um, that's really like the biggest thing for me. So being able to take them to different parks is a big thing for me to just utilize. And the parks that we have, it's a free field trip. Um, a lot of the kids um, don't know that we have so many parks in, in Bowling Green. So being able to take them there, um, I really like that. Um, we do have three different groups. We have five through seven eight and nine, and then our 10 through 13 uh, group. But like Braxton was saying, we take similar field trips. So we go to Regal, we go to Capital Arts um, Parks. Um, we try sometimes, sometimes, but we try to allow our older kids to kind of tell us what they would like to do because at the end of the day, it is their summer. Um, so they will give us some ideas and then we'll try to plan accordingly to that. Um, we also have like a a partnership, I guess you could say, with Warren County Public Library. So we have them come in once a week. So the kids, and we do have a library at our center, so the kids will get to go to the library over the summer and they do different activities with them. And that also takes place during our after school program as well. The kids love to cook at Parker Bennett. They love to to eat food and try different things. That's, that's really what our summer is. We're busy we we try to stay we try to keep them busy we do water balloon fights like we have a big water day we do water balloon fights with the different age groups we'll do like a a water slide we'll make we'll make that happen for them we'll do like kickball like water kickball i guess that's what you can call it um but yeah we we try to keep the kids very active during the summer so when they go home to their parents they sleep good at night so that is that is the main goal is just to make sure that these kids are having fun because it is their summer so that's right yeah so we're, we're truly making 
you know, uh, memories happen, creating core memories for, for the kids that come into our programs, the adults that come into our programs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just giving them a chance to have a, a fun summer experience like every kid uh, desires to have. Mm-hmm. So, no, that's awesome. So, yeah, again, our, our three summer camps, um, you know, that we offer within the Adaptive Recreation Division, we've got really four summer camps. So Camp Happy Days for Youth with Disabilities um, and then New Adventure Adult Camp for Adults with uh, various intellectual or physical disabilities. Um, we've got summer fun camp at the FL Moxley Community Center and Camp Good Times uh, at the Parker Bennett Community Center. So when we think about how we facilitate these camps, obviously it's not just these these individuals that are talking, um, you know, today on this episode of, of our city podcast, but we hire an immense amount of seasonal positions uh, in parks and recreation. We, we hire a couple hundred across all of our divisions to make summer programming happen. So camp counselors, you know, you're looking at probably about 50 total across the three camps, if not a little bit more, you know, uh, on another episode, spoiler alert, we'll talk about the Russell Sims Aquatic Center and we hire about 65 staff um, between lifeguards and pool attendants to make that happen. We hire seasonal positions in the summer for athletics, uh, for parks maintenance. Um, And so, you know, truly, we we are not just the place to to make core memories for for the youth um, and, and the adults that are camp participants, but we really do feel like we we provide an opportunity in the summer for people to have their most memorable job. You know, maybe it's similar to Braxton's story. You know, a, a kid comes and works at camp with us uh, in the summer, and they fall in love with it, and then 20 years from now, they're going to be running a community center, mm-hmm. um, just like Braxton. And, and we take a lot of pride in that. You know, yeah. we, we truly do think that the jobs that we provide in the summer are, are meant to be memory makers um, for those people that work for us. We want them to be a part of that process of making kids smile every day um, through the programs that we provide, and, and also be a part of that creativity and, and that imagination that goes into planning. Um, and, and for that reason, our jobs are are a blast. That's why we do it every day um, as full-time professionals, and we want people to taste that a little bit um, in our seasonal position. So if you could um, just give one line or, or one reason of encouragement for people to take part in what Bowling Green Parks and Recreation offers in the summer, whether it's as a as a counselor working for us or, or being a participant in our programs, give, give us one last encouragement for people to take part in what we offer this summer. I would say it's a fun place to work like it doesn't feel like work because you get to come and you get to have fun but you also get to make an impact and you also get to build relationships with these kids that's awesome i Mm -hmm. love that i guess i'll come uh, talk to the parents parents yeah Mm -hmm. okay okay yeah okay all right now. <laughs> yeah. I know we're gonna like say roll and then go. Um, yeah, but, t- talk talk to the parents, Braxton. Parents. Why should they sign their kids up for summer camp? To the parents, I think this is um, all three centers. Uh, it's a place of inclusiveness, uh, unity, and we're uh, spreading love for all mankind. So mm-hmm. uh, that's all our county kids, the city. We don't care where you come from. Just you know, come in and you know, let's do this together. This is for you guys. We're here to serve you. I like it. Maddie, what about you? You know, we're a kind of program-based department that there's no limits on anything. Mm -hmm. We don't put limits on people. We don't put limits on what people can do. And you can come out and you can do anything that you really set your mind to. Ultimately, at Bowling Green Parks and Recreation, we want to help people find their fun. We want to help people find what they're passionate about. And we, we really want to help them find full enjoyment in life and and living here in Bowling Green and Warren County. Thanks for joining us uh, today on the Talk BGKY podcast, the official podcast of the city of Bowling Green. Maddie, Braxton, Jakia, thank you guys for being guests today. No problem. Appreciate y'all joining us. Um, Summer's right around the corner, right? So if you're interested in taking part in anything that we offer at Bowling Green Parks and Rec this summer, um, be sure to, to hop on your computer, hop on your phone, visit bgky.org slash bgpr um, and you can find online registration information about all 24 of our city parks um, and the various facilities that we have so be sure to, to join us in the park this summer with bgpr and we will see you guys again soon bye you've been listening to the official city podcast <laughs> thanks for joining us